Piggy fan games. We've all heard of them, we've all come to like them, and we've all come to hate them. With that being said, there are some pretty decent fan games out there, but wherever there's something good, there's always going to be something bad, and that's what I will be covering in today's video. So before I start, I just want to warn everyone who's watching that this video does contain usage of strong language. And I'd also like to point out that these are all just my opinions, so please do not attack me or because I like something that you or a lot of others do not, or because I do not like something that you or a lot of others do. Secondly, do not send hate to any of the creators of the following games. Just because I do not like a game doesn't mean I have problems with the creators too. There's a difference between hating something that someone has made as opposed to hating someone as a person. Which I am the former, not the latter. And no matter how bad some of these games may be, the creators do not deserve any hate. Third of all, I am dividing all these games into four tiers. Excellent, good, okay, and bad slash could improve. And fourth of all, my opinions are also split into three parts. First part being what I like about the game, and then what I don't like about the game, and then what I think could have been done better. And fifth and finally of all, this is a message to all the creators of the following games. Don't take this as a hate video. All your games have potential, and I'm glad if this video helped you work some things out. Peggy The Last Hour There's not really much to say about this game since it's now been set to private, but I don't really like this game. It felt incredibly rushed, especially in terms of story, and not to mention, the developer of this game isn't the nicest of people. I was also informed by Mindblocks Fusion, who was the developer for this game, that the farm chapter was made in just one day, which is why it looks so incredibly bland and rushed. And the story makes no sense at all. Like, there's no explaining any events, we just escape a farm, meet Cindy, go to a cave, and then reunite with a new character and go and find a cure. That's it. No offence, but the creator really did not take any creative writing classes. But I did like the designs of the skins and the animations too, but I feel like there were just so many things with this game that could have done better, and that's why I'm putting this game on the bottom tier. Piggy the Hidden Text. I know, I know, everyone hates this game, and it's not hard to understand why. There's not really anything I like about this game, it's just all free models for the most part. And one thing that bugs me to no end about this game is the fact that all of the cutscenes and bots use B Slick's Piggy music instead of a variety of different audios. There is an extremely rare case in only a few chapters where it's at a different pitch, but that still doesn't justify it from being unlistenable. Oh, and the dragon's theme in Distorted Outpost is actually the Branched Reality's Chapter 1 intro cutscene music, so that was a surprise, but still. The character designs really aren't the greatest, that's all I can say. And the story of this game again makes no sense whatsoever. No offence to Hawk who made this game, but did you also never take any creative writing classes? Not to mention, some of the chapter's titles are kind of misleading, like Hidden Hospital, is a hospital really meant to be hidden, and Shadow Breakout, there's not really any shadows in this map. Overall, this fan game appears to be incredibly rushed as confirmed by a comment from Shadow Developer reading, Wow, 7 of these chapters in just 10 days? No wonder these are all lazy as hell. And while this is probably the most hated fan game, the creator doesn't deserve all the hate, because at the end of the day, it's just someone trying to make a game. And what bugs me as well is how this game got 700,000 visits, even though the majority of the assets are free models. And you know, this isn't a good game when even if the creator of this game hates it. I'm not sure if it's true, but someone on Twitter informed me about it. But how I'd improve this game for sure is for the most part, character designs and the story. And for that, I'm also putting this game on the bottom tier. I would rank all of Hawk's other games, but they all suffer from the same problems as the hidden text.
piggy traumatic experiences. There's lots to talk about for this game. I really like this game because it's kind of like backstories of piggy characters we don't really know much about, such as Foxy or Raze. The backstories the developer came up with are extremely creative, and I love the designs of some of the characters too. But there were only two things holding me back from this game in the first place, first part being the bot hitbox issue. Again, Mindblocks Fusion informed me that he spoke with the developer about this. Turns out that if it were to be fixed, the developer would need to rewrite the entire bot script, which I'm sure would be incredibly stressful. So we just need to learn to accept it. And Pony's experience also used to bug me because it was set in the refinery. And most of you know that Pony doesn't know about the refinery in the original game. So that really bugged me. I massively approved of this experience once it got changed to factory because things were sorted out. And there's not really much I'd say on how this game could be improved because I think it's great for what it is. And for that, I'm putting this game on the top tier. Piggy the Massacre. Piggy the Massacre is a fan game inspired by the result of isolation. It's essentially about a police officer named Lisa finding out why everything is so murderous and bloody. And the things I like about this game are the character designs. Although the gore is pretty overused, the designs still look great. And I love the fact that some of the maps also use Roblox's terrain editor, as not many fan games do that. And I like the chase scenes too, they're fun. But the things I don't like about the game is the horror feels pretty forced. It's not necessarily scary, but that's not really to say that I don't like the game, because I do. And sometimes the grammar in the cutscenes is pretty poor, as well as the soundtracks of the bots being incredibly loud sometimes. And the map designs aren't really the greatest. I mean, I've only seen half of the game, so I could be wrong about that statement, but I only managed to play chapter 5 before Kevin shuts down the game to revamp it, so I'm unable to know. Not to mention so far, chapter 5 is my least favourite chapter in terms of map structure. Now, how I would improve this is I would make the maps look a little better, fix the poor grammar in the cutscenes, and I would also lower the volume of the chase music because it sure did explode my ears whenever it came on. But I think Piggy the Massacre is at best decent for a fan game, and it's great for what it is, so I'm putting it on the good tier. Peggy the Lost Secret is a fan game about you attempting to uncover the lost secrets that disappeared many years ago, and I like it. I like the designs of the maps, especially the attic which looks really nice, and the character designs too, though I feel like some things could have been done better, but I've also heard that there's also a revamp of this game coming soon maybe because chapter 7 was the last chapter presumably of the old version, but the reason I'm using an old clip for the gameplay footage is because I can't actually teleport to a single chapter inside of the game, so Space, if you're watching this, please fix that. So overall, this isn't a bad game and I'm putting it in the okay tier. Where do I even begin with this one? This was one of the first ever Piggy fan games ever made that's still open today. Yeah, you got that right. This game was made in 2020 and survived the copyright takedown of all the old Piggy games such as the old APRP and others. And speaking of the copyright takedown wave of 2020, it's like the Storega slide where a part of Norway broke off and caused a tsunami which separated Britain from mainland Europe. Do you see what I mean here? Anyway, let's talk about the maps. The maps are really well made for an old Peggy fan game, but the character designs could do with some improvements. The first ever map sewers can clearly see the first stage of the developers work for this game as it's not the greatest, but over time, improvements are made. And I like the head cannon that's the final half of Piggy Book 2 takes place in Sweden. I like all the maps in this game, my personal favourites being Corrupted Dimension, Theatre, Pyramid and Village. I also found it really cool whenever the creator made a skin of a big YouTuber who played the game, such as Creecraft, Antantix and Bananamin. And since it's an old fan game, there's not really much I can say on how I'd improve this, because the aspects of it being bad just add to the classic fan game charm, you know what I mean. 
I'd say the only thing I'd fix is the terrible grammar in some of the cutscenes, but overall, this is a great game for its time, and I'm putting it in the good tier. Piggy the Blackout is a fan game about Penny and Georgie surviving in an apocalypse where there is a major blackout at play. And the maps are just original Piggy maps, but altered, but the edits are great, and I like the added jump scares to some of the maps too. I also love Tigri being a full on protagonist as well, and I especially love Barry's design in Chapter 6. The character designs in this game are great, and again, there's not really anything holding me back from this game. Well, apart from the RB Battles map, which I still have no idea how to complete because I can't find the mop no matter how hard I look. But above all, this is a decent fan game. And to think this also collaborated with Piggy Rebooter too. So overall, I'm putting this game in the good tier. It's just a shame that this game has been discontinued after Chapter 7. Peggy Retrograde is a really good fan game in my opinion, not only from the maps but character designs too, and I like the chase scenes as well. So we start off in an arcade where we accidentally stay till closing time, and a manager, which also happens to be the boss of this chapter named Isabel, finds us and then she doesn't feel so good and begins to chase us. Then we are in a sewer, evade another monster and meet up with a worker named Roman. We then go through some more chapters until we reach chapter 5, which I think is the best chapter so far. Not only do I love the design of Irene, but I also love the fact that for once, this chapter finally has some lore and story apart from all the others, excluding the Halloween chapter. So yeah, time to bring up my nitpicks about this game. I don't like how there's barely any lore of this game up until chapter 5. I know in the chapter 3 beginning cutscene we get a bit of an introduction from Roman, but I just think that the story could have been explained more and a bit better than how it currently is. Overall, this game has potential from what I've seen from chapter 5, and I'd be really disappointed if it went to waste, so I'm putting this game in the good tier. Piggy Unstable Reality is a spin on the original Piggy game, but everything is warped and corrupted, and I think it's a really fun game. I like the corrupted designs and names of all the characters, and I like how the story has its own unique turns and twists, and I must say, I'm really excited for Chapter 9, because it's been about half a year since Chapter 8 came out, and I'm curious to know who Mr. P was talking to on the walkie talkie in Chapter 6. I don't really see any problems with this game, so I'm putting this one on the good tier. Piggy What If is a game that's possibly inspired off of both Piggy Branch realities and Piggy traumatic experiences. The game follows scenarios such as what if Penny escaped with Georgie and so on. The scenarios are creative, but I did notice the creator was getting a lot of backlash on this game because it apparently copied branched realities, which was actually debunked by Byron, stating that it's an inspired project. Now, what I don't like about this game is that some of the cutscenes are incredibly slow, and the bots don't really even move for the most part, and the cutscenes have terrible grammar, but it seems this game has actually been remade, so I may analyse this new version of it, but overall, it's not a bad game, so I'm putting it in the okay tier. Piggy Seeking Revenge is surprisingly another one of those short fan games, and when I say short, I mean only having a few chapters, not even 12. Like Mindblocks Fusion also stated about the last hour, the game was going to have 6 chapters, and only 5 of them came out because what I presume drama between the creator of the dev team, and it's not hard to see why judging by this screenshot. And Piggy Seeking Revenge is no different, because this game will only have 8 chapters, 7 which are currently playable, well, more if you count the extra chapters technically, and despite being such a short game, there's a lot of things I like about the game. The story is going somewhere in only 8 chapters which is really impressive. The character designs and the map designs are incredible, and a few of the themes are even custom composed too, now that is really cool. Though, I do have nitpicks about this game, 
Some of the animations on the skin could have been done better. The story could have been explained a little better too. Oh, and my least favourite thing about this game. The creator deliberately puts an image of the hidden text in chapter 3 to presumably mock the creator. Now, I'm not sure if there was a drama that went on between these games that I'm unaware of, so please correct me if I'm wrong about this statement, but that's just not fucking nice at all. Regardless of how terrible a game may be, it's just someone who's trying their best. If you make fun of other games in your game, not only will you have a bad outlook and reputation on your product, but also on yourself as well, because you'll seem like a major douchebag by doing that. But however, this has since been changed, but I will never forget it. But overall, I like Seeking Revenge, and it's going into the good tier. Piggy Finding the Cure is a game I have mixed feelings about, but let's just waste no time of here. So, the objective of this story is of course find the cure, and I like the designs of the characters, though the mixed style tells me some models may or may not have been stolen, but I could be wrong about that statement, so please correct me if I'm wrong. There's not really a lot I like about this game, so it's time to get into my nitpicks. So, first of all, the cutscenes have terrible grammar, and the story isn't really explained that well, and the camera bobbling when you move just gives me motion sickness, and sometimes makes it impossible to grab an item when moving, and a lot of these chapters don't even have ending cutscenes, so we don't really know a good deal about the story, so how I'd fix this game is I'd make a different place within the game for the ending cutscene to take place in, and add a block in the chapter at the exit which teleports you to the cutscene game, and I'd also remove the camera bobbling too, because it becomes annoying after a while. I would also fix the grammar in the cutscenes too, and the maps could do with some improvements too. But overall, it's at best decent, so I'm putting it in the okay tier. The Peggy Battle is a game made by the one and only Tenuous Flea. And it's a game where you can play as piggy skins all for free, run around and kill people. And you can even be what's called a helper too. Players can give you an item which you can then go and use to stun an infected or kill a traitor or a zombie player. There's not really much I don't like about this game because a lot of things here are really good. I like the Robbie NPCs in the map and you can tell which one is good and which one is bad because the one that kills you is red and the one that stuns infected is blue. And it's cool how you can be a traitor in this game too. And I love being able to transform into an infected zombie player by giving a Dr. Piggy a needle. Not to mention, there's also a chapter technically built into here, the Vent chapter, which I really like. Not much I can say about this game, other than the fact it's going straight to the top tier. Piggy the Depths of Darkness is a fan game I'm sure barely anyone remembers, but I still remember this. This game starts off normally in Chapter 1 where everything looks normal and peaceful and calm, then when you find a code and go into a room upstairs, a long chase scene begins with a weird black skeleton looking penny monster which I really like the look of. Then once the chase scene is done, you then need to escape the house as normally while still avoiding Penny, and then you need to eventually open the room where father is, and uh, is it me or is that just a little too much blood for my liking? Then once you escape through the vent in the basement, you then have to survive Penny for one minute, and then you escape. Now, there isn't really much I like about this game. There's barely any story or lore even in the first chapter, let alone even a cutscene. Not to mention, the game suddenly just got discontinued because I think the creator lost interest in Piggy. But if this game were to ever come back, I think it could do with some things being done better. So overall, I'm putting this game in the bottom tier. Piggy the Eyes of Truth is yet again another fan game inspired by the result of isolation, and it's also made by Kevin developer like Piggy the Massacre which I covered earlier. And I think basically the same of it, the character designs are good, the game's not really scary, and the cutscene has terrible grammar in the dialogue, and it's terrible usually most of the time. But what I really don't like about the game is that sometimes the story isn't really that great, 
And like Piggy Finding the Cure, some of the maps don't have ending cutscenes, and some of the soundtracks are incredibly loud and ear exploding too. But I did like the chase scenes. What I think could have been done better with this game is add some ending cutscenes to some of the maps, fix the terrible grammar, explain the story a bit better and so on, but overall it's not bad so I'm putting it in the okay tier. Peggy the Final Answer is a game created by my friends Mindblocks Fusion, Alien, Electric and other developers. Now, there's only one chapter at the time of recording this, so there's not really much to talk about other than the possible potential of this game. I really like the designs of the cow bot as well as the animations in the game, so the character designs are probably going to be great seeing as Alien and Electric are modelers, I know for sure their stuff usually looks nice. And story-wise, I'm not going to say anything about it since like I said, there's only one chapter, and the map design is good too for a first chapter. Since I'm excited to see more of this game, but right now there's not a lot, I'll put it in the okay tier. Peggy Hard Mode is a game created by Wondrous Ninja, which was originally made back in 2020, but in April of 2021, it had an entire new revamp, and the map and character designs are really great as well as the story. There's not really much I have to say about this game other than it's a really great game. It's just a shame that the game got discontinued, because after Chapter 6, I was excited on what was to come next, but it seems we'll never know until further notice. So, overall, it's a great game, so I'm putting this on the top tier. Piggy Deceptive Tales is a game that I'm fond of but haven't played for a while, and there's a lot I like about it, from the designs of the characters to the story. It's a shame there's only three chapters, I'd really like to see more of this game, but I'm grateful for what I did end up getting. The Robber's Hideout map was a really fun map to play, and I love Willow and Rash both being the antagonists in this one. What's cool is that in the extra chapter, which was called Heist, I think, pretty sure it was called Heist, we actually got to see the lore of what happened before the first chapter, which I always love to see. The other chapters are great too. I especially love the boss fight in the Clock Tower map, and again, I don't really have any problems with this game, so I'm putting it on the good tier. Piggy the Storybook is a game about stories focusing on individual Piggy characters, and what I like about this game is there's no actual constructed chronological continuated story in any of these chapters, at least so far. They're all just their own stories about each character, and I love the boss fights in the game, and the character designs too. Now, what I don't like about the game is pretty mixed, really. I'll start off with something which has now been resolved. The second story of the game, story number two, Tigri vs Marcus, looks like a blatant copy of the Piggy the Robotic Apocalypse Chapter 4, at least in the old version anyways. And after I uploaded my video on the old version, Xavier, the creator of the Robotic Apocalypse, caught sight of it and made a Twitter post about it, stating that he was obviously cross that the chapter was awfully similar to the Robotic Apocalypse equivalent. But I believe him and the creator of the game worked everything out in the end, and now we have a new version of this story which definitely feels more inspired and based off as what it tells you. Now what I don't like about this game is that some of the models appear to be stolen, though I could be very wrong about this statement. When I was scrolling through Twitter as I usually do every day, I saw Flashcat Films posting about his Mr. P model being in Piggy the Storybook, as well as a Red Panda model too. I looked at them both, and they awfully look quite similar. I'm not sure if this is a coincidence or not, but if these models are stolen, then that's kind of scummy to just have someone else's stolen work in your own product. However, I could be completely wrong about this statement, so correct me if I'm wrong as always, but that's just what I think. Overall, I like this game, so it's going into the good tier. Every Piggy game in 2023 be like is another game created by my friends Mindblocks Fusion, Alien, Electric, and other developers. 
Essentially, what this game is about is you trying to find John Pork after he went missing. And I like how every map is edited and just has something random or weird inside of it, and the character designs are cool too. And what I also love about this game is the fact that I got to be involved in it some way. That's right, my map from my Piggy fan game Piggy Revenge of the Angora is in Chapter 11. How cool is that? Also, there was a quest which I really enjoyed too. It was called, I'm white, but not that white. And something extremely hilarious happened on that night the quest was released. Alien told me that it was released, so I went in the game to go find it. Turns out that it wasn't actually released yet, and Mindblocks and Alien realised big time that they fucked up. Luckily everything worked out in the end, and as an apology, mine actually put a badge for me in the game titled Sorry Kami, which I appreciate. Now that I've got that out of the way, it's time to talk about what I don't like about this game. I don't like how there's barely any lore explained in this game. I mean, I made a 17 minute long video explaining the lore as best as I could, but I feel like it could have been told better, and by that I mean add more cutscenes, because only a few of the chapters actually have cutscenes, most notably being the gallery and the school map, and I'd also lower some of the loud noises down. I understand that this game has loud noises, but some of them are just too loud for my likings, especially the claw machine sounds. But, at the end of the day, this game is basically just one massive joke game, and I'm putting it in the OK tier. Where do I even begin on this one? Piggy Rebooted is a spin on the original game, like games such as The Eyes of Truth and Unstable Reality, but everything is basically remastered, and this is apparently the most hated fan game, but I don't see why it gets so much hate. People say they don't like the idea and find it extremely unnecessary for Piggy to get a remaster. Well, whoever made those kind of statements, what do you think about the statements you just made after finding out tons of other Piggy fan games which are spins on the original game exist? I just think it's stupid, because Piggy Rebooted isn't the only spin on the original Piggy game. Anyway, I really like how this game is. I like it how it's a fan game which also has abilities, with the Piggy Tracker one being my personal favourite. The maps are also really well made too, especially the characters, though the only one which I'm uncertain of is Doggy's model, it just doesn't really fit with the rest of the game. And what's cool is that each chapter also comes with a quest too, and the story is really interesting too. Though, let's talk about something big which happened with Piggy Rebooted. So Piggy Rebooted used to have a 1.0 version which I did make videos of, and I was all the way up to chapter 8 of the game. I'd already encountered who's possibly the main antagonist of this game, Majiki, and what I saw in chapter 8 left me excited as to what was to come next, until one day, Vixo just privated the game, and I was really confused. Turns out the game was having a rework, then sparked the birth of Piggy Rebooted 2.0, or what's now just called Piggy Rebooted in general. Many people say that the 2.0 version is even worse than the 1.0, but come on, understand that Vixo made the 2.0 version to satisfy the people who didn't enjoy the 1.0 version, and this is how you treat him in return? Yes, I know about the whole N-word pass situation, but Vixo actually debunked those allegations, and whoever still believes it was him is just a pillock, although I could be wrong about that, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, I see some big improvements in the 2.0 version, especially the character designs in the GUIs, and if Majiki looked great in the 1.0, imagine what we could get in the current version. I've also heard that the 1.0 version is possibly going to be playable again too, and I don't really have any problem with the games despite every now and then the cutscene has terrible grammar, and the fact that the female characters in the 1.0 version had the male arms. Yeah, to those of you who don't know how sex determination works in Piggy, basically, if a character has hands resembling mittens, it means they're female, but if the hands have fingers, it means they're male, and it made all of these female characters look transgender. No offence to transgender people, by the way, because honestly, I don't care. You be you. So yeah, overall, I think Piggy Rebooted is very overhated, and I think it's one of the best fan games out there, so I'm putting this in the great tier.
you can shoot me all you want, but that is my opinion. Can you all fuck off now? I have a video to be getting on with. Thank you. Piggy Revenge of the Angora is a game which was made by me, and it's about Kami trying to survive the apocalypse and potentially get his revenge on something. Now, since I'm the developer of this game, I'm going to talk about what I feel like I've done good and bad with this game. I'm going to talk about what I feel like I've done good, uh, what I could do better. So, first off, I feel like I've done good with the map designs in recent time. As you can see by a picture of chapter 4, my map building skills really weren't the greatest, but now, in this picture from chapter 7, you can see I've come a long way. I also feel like I improved on the character designs too, because in the past, the characters were usually just recycled and recolored piggy characters, such as Kitty or Kenneth. And I think I'm doing good with the story too, because you won't believe some of the stuff I've got planned. Now, what I don't really like is for starters the maps. I feel like I could have done better on some of the maps, like chapter 4 and 5 for example, and I feel like I could have designed and animated a lot of the characters better too, because up until chapter 5, I always used animations from Peggy skins but slightly altered, and about the feedback, one person doesn't seem to like the fact that I put myself into the game, which is extremely pathetic, because it's the only thing that they seem to be complaining about too. Well. If you don't like my work of fiction, which I've done purely just for enjoyment, then you can do what someone with an actual life you would do, and pick up your stuff and fuck off elsewhere. Self-insert to just putting yourself into a story or work of fiction. Do they hurt people? No. So like I said, go elsewhere if the only thing you're going to be harassing me about is a self-insert. And I've also received a complaint about Kami not being in the roleplay. Well, maybe if you actually paid attention to my community post for the past few days, you'd have your answer right here. And another complaint which I've received is the fact that map building has barely improved. You're telling me that I went from this to this and there's no improvement? Are you just fucking blind or what? Anyway, my overall conclusion is that my game is at best decent, and there's things I could definitely do better. And yeah, to every silly bastard out there that thinks I think highly of my phone fan game and think it's to be the best game ever, well, isn't that just pure bigotry? That's just living proof that you know nothing about my personality or how the way I think. Like they say, do your fucking research before you jump onto conclusions. But, apart from that, I'm putting my game in the OK tier. Right off the bat, I love this game. There's just something about it which I just love so much. This game is basically Peggy's take on the backrooms and it's a really fun game. I love the character designs, and I love it how there's almost no complex story for this game either. You just get a cannon ending and a black screen and that's it. I love it sometimes the game actually makes you figure out the lore for yourself instead of just telling it for you, which adds more to the mystery, though I could be wrong about that statement as always because the ship chapter did have some cutscenes. I especially love the chase scenes too, I believe they're inspired off of Poppy Playtime, and it does a lot of things right to make it a thrilling chase scene, such as camera bobbling, ambience and sound effects. So far this game only has one chapter in terms of main game, and from this alone, I can tell what's next to come will be great, and again, there's not really any problems I have with this game, and I think it's one of the best fan games out there, so I'm putting this on the top tier. Peggy the Lost Story is a game which I'm sure not many people know of, besides those in the Spanish speaking part of the Peggy community but I know of it. So, this is a game made by a Venezuelan YouTuber known as Adrian Rotat1, hence why the game is mostly in Spanish, but with Roblox's translation system, I can still play the game in English too, and I think for the most part, it's translated into English alright, and the character designs are for the most part good as well, 
but like some of the games I've spoken about, there's only one chapter. I wondered why the game never really got developed on, but I eventually learned that it's because Adrian's internet is really bad. And since there is only one chapter, there's not really much I can talk about other than this is an alright game. So because of this, I'm putting it into the OK tier. Piggy Branch Realities is another game like Piggy What If and Piggy Traumatic Experiences. It's basically like What If scenarios, current ones being What If Penny never went with her parents, and What If Doggy never got infected, and What If Bunny never got infected. And they're really great. I lo really love the designs and animations of the characters, and the cutscenes too. Though, some in my comments seem to think otherwise of the designs of the skins, but the only thing I don't like about this game is the fact that a few of these stories are the same. Like, take chapter 1 and 2 for example, Penny ends up by herself and becomes a warrior and defender. Then in chapter 2, sort of the same thing happens with Doggy too. This would kind of disappoint me if this formula was used for every chapter, but I hope it doesn't. Overall, this is one of the best Piggy fan games out there, and I'm putting this in the top tier. Ducky Reawakening is a game created by my friend Alien, and it's about a duck named Dean. Now, like some of the other games, there's only one chapter so far, and the map design is decent, and the character designs are good, especially Demetrius. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can really say about this game, but I'm looking forward to more coming from this game in the future, so I'm putting this on the OK tier. Hey, the result of Isolation is a fan game, which like a lot of others I've just mentioned, is a spin on the original P game. Now, this is basically a horror equivalent, all based off of Georgie's perspective. I really like the character designs, but I do think the blood theme is quite overused, as well as the poppy playtime and amnesia chase music, and the story from Georgie's perspective was going somewhere too. It's just a shame the creator got terminated, because we should learn to accept things for what they are. Now, what I don't like about this game is that the horror feels pretty forced. It's not really necessarily scary, but it's not to say I don't find it fun though, because I like the chase scenes in this game. And overall, I think despite being discontinued, it's still one of the best fan games out there, so I'm putting this on the top tier. And finally, we come to our last game of this video, Piggy The Return of Nostalgia. This game is a spin on the original Piggy game, and it's basically nostalgified if that's what you want to say. A lot of the stuff in this game, from the way the characters are designed, to the maps, just bring back memories, which I massively approve of. And I really like how this game is a mix of the original Piggy game and its own fan game. People may not approve of that idea like I discussed when reviewing Piggy Rebooted, but I really like it. And my only nitpick with this game is the sometimes poor grammar in the cutscenes. And this is actually a re-inspired project of a discontinued game called Piggy Back to the 2020s. If I analyse this, then I may as well be talking about the same thing. But overall, this is a good game, so I'm putting this in the good tier. So there you guys have it. Those were all the games that I reviewed and those were my honest opinions about them. I liked some and I didn't like some, but to the creators of these games, don't feel ashamed. Don't take this video as a hate message, I'm just trying to help you all work some things out in your games. I'm glad if this video helped you out on some of the stuff. Also, I don't wish death or deletion upon any of these games. Sure, I may seem like I hate some of them with every bone in my body, but I'm not like that because we should be glad as these games even exist at all, regardless of how terrible some of them may be. But that's going to be it now, so peace out.